it's an absolutely horrific story. Uh, a girl, 12 years old, her name is Fawzia Amoudi. Uh, she was living in Hudayda province in Yemen. Uh, she was forcibly married uh, last year to a man twice her age when she was 11 years old. She was then taken out of school, then became pregnant. Uh, we got all these details from Ahmed al Qurashi, who is uh, with a child's right organization in Yemen. He actually brought this case to the media's attention. Uh, this girl started going into labor last week. Um, she's in a remote province of Yemen. It was very difficult for an ambulance to reach her, according to Al Qurashi. An ambulance reached her the next day, the second day when she was in labor. It was very, very complicated. Finally, she got to a hospital that day, and then the third day, when she was still in labor, she bled to death, and the child was stillborn. Namwa? Oh, so painful to hear all those details, Mohammed. Perhaps you can give us a sense of how common child brides are in Yemen, and also how common it is to have this sort of age discrepancy between the bride and the groom. Unfortunately, it's a lot more common than people in the West would know. Uh, what you typically see uh, when stories like this emerge, and we did a lot of extensive coverage on CNN last year about a child bride in Yemen whose uh, case became an international media sensation. But what you typically see is you see government officials coming out and saying, we need to change the law, we need to raise the minimum age for marriage, we need to make sure that these tribal customs don't happen anymore because it's actually against the law. But when you look deeper into the story, you see that, in fact, these laws haven't been passed. You see the same thing happening in Saudi Arabia, maybe with not as much prevalence, but I did reporting last year about an eight-year-old girl who was married off to a 47-year-old man, and she was trying to get a divorce. And it took months. It took months for her to get a divorce, and the Saudi Minister of Justice came out and said, oh, we need to change the law, this is under review, uh, and it never happened. So the problem is the follow-up. Also, people ask how much of this is tribal custom, how much of this is actually religious custom, and it's actually tribal custom. Them, but everything gets mixed up, and when, when a country comes under the province of uh, Islamic law or Sharia law, people don't quite know where the law begins and the custom ends, and you see these things going on and on. Namwa? Uh, so, Mohammed, it's tribal uh, custom or religious custom. Is it also sometimes financial uh, necessity, as it might be perceived by the family? Absolutely. A lot of times a dowry is involved. A lot of times uh, families think that this is the best thing for their daughters because they're disadvantaged and so they marry them off. They get a large dowry from a much older man. That sort of thing happens. I spoke earlier to UNICEF, one of the UNICEF representatives in Yemen. His name is Nasim al-Rahman. And he spoke to us specifically about what it's like for a child bright in Yemen how much trauma this brings to the girl. You know, these girls in Yemen that get married at a young age to a much older man and can't do anything about it, they're called by people in Yemen death brides. Nasim al-Rahman didn't know specifically about this case, but he talked us through what it's like for these girls. This is what he had to say. She's pulled out of the school and pushed into marriage. When they're pushed into marriage, they're pushed into early pregnancy. And then, in a system and environment where the health facilities are so poor that most of the births takes place in the hands of the self-taught midwives and nurses, this is a recipe for disaster. It's like pushing our children into the trap of death. Namwa, I've tried to reach out to the Yemeni government. We've not been able to get a reaction. I've tried to reach out to the parents of the girl and the husband. We've not been able to reach them yet. We'll continue to follow up on the story. But as of now, it's a very, very sad story. And unfortunately, this keeps happening and will continue to happen until somebody high up in the government in these countries makes a definitive end to these practices. Yeah. It sometimes takes the case of just one to shed light on the suffering of so many. A child's rights group says that a Yemeni child bride, Fawzia Amadi, labored for three days before dying along with her baby on Friday. She was just 12 and was married at 11, a practice all too common in the tribal region of western Yemen, where she's from, and a continuing problem throughout the poorest country in the Middle East. With every labored breath, these vulnerable newborns are one step closer to survival by receiving the specialized care that's all too rare in Yemen. These compromised young lives are many times the offspring of children. And at bedsides throughout the maternity ward in Yemen's capital, Sana'a, there are stories of girls too young to have children who die trying. This man tells us of a girl he found in the middle of the road in his village, desperate and in labor. 
She died, and after she died, the baby died. She was walking a long way and she died on the road without making it to hospital. He says his own young wife married at just 15, had four children, but also four miscarriages. I suffered a lot, she says. I bled a lot and was in pain and upset. She says, I was scared for myself and my children and regretted marrying so young. Suha Basrin is with Oxfam in Yemen and says the country has one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the Middle East. If girls survive, they face complications during pregnancy. And most of the girls, they have uh, problems um, during delivery. Their children are uh, uh, low weight. Uh, they have uh, anemia, low hemoglobin, because the girl herself, her body is not ready to bear a child. And uh, malnutrition among the mothers and the uh, children. The cycle of maternal death is carried on many times by the cultural tradition of child brides. The UN says more than half of all married women in Yemen are under 18. It's the fate that Najud Ali fought so hard to escape. Najud was just 10 years old when her family married her off to a man more than three times her age. In a highly publicized case, Najud demanded and received a divorce. She is now back with her family. But hers is one of just a handful of similar cases. Most child brides stay married and often begin having children of their own immediately. Human rights campaigners say the legacy of child brides not only deprives young women of their childhood, but often condemns them and their babies to an early death. Paul Newton, CNN, London.